Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for coming and sharing this beautiful day with us. I'll tell you, um, I won't keep you in here a long time, and all of this stuff is very self-explanatory, but part of our, as Kyle's recording and part of some of the work and documentation we do for the Presbytery, we do have to have these training meetings, and there are certain things that we have to cover in them. So, um, a lot of it I might kind of read to you, but you can just highlight and make any notes that you want to. And... Um, the first one, last last time I didn't give the handouts till the very end, but I said, y'all can go through them, y'all can make notes, y'all can do anything you want. Um, part of our agenda, I want to just tell you who the admin committee members are. Um, I am clerk of session and Lilian Elledge is rotating off. David Hyde will be on, um, he's class of 2023. Sharon Smoke, um, who has been our member at large, is going to be on class of 2024. Ruth LaForge is our previous ex-clerk of session, and she attends. Barbara Robinette is one of our members at large. And Preston Culbertson, who is chairman of the diaconate this year, he also serves on that. And Kyle is our assigned church officer that moderate. Well, he attends our meetings. and. Um, helps us out with that. Beth, I don't think I count one of those. Do you have another one? Oh. Um, I thought he was talking about. Oh, the agenda? Which? Yeah, with the names and stuff. Oh, it's not in there? Oh, Gra just grab okay. another okay. packet. I might have, I rearranged them and I was trying to make sure I had them all arranged right, but just, okay. yeah, just grab another packet and I'll collect <laughs> the ones that aren't used so I can hand them out to people who can watch the video and do their makeup session. But the purpose of this training is to highlight what's expected of you as an officer. I think all of you got a letter from me that said thank you for agreeing to serve. The most important thing is it said the committee that you had agreed to serve on. And I served on the nomination committee before too and sometimes we're so thankful that that person said yes um, we don't elaborate on some of the duties, but um, we will, I think most of you in here, with a, an exception of a few, will serve a three-year term. There are a couple that are fulfilling terms, and Peggy is lucky she has a five-year term. But um, to tell you what committee you're on, who your current chair is, so if you have any questions about what you've committed to do, you can get in touch with that person. And you can always get in touch with me as well. I'll be happy to help. I might not know the answer, but I will be happy to point you in the right direction. Um, we want to, if you're a brand new officer, we want to make you feel more comfortable in your role and encourage you to participate in meetings. And the well-being of our church depends on the accomplishments of our committees and the involvement of our officers. Um, the admin manual has a wealth of information about the policies and procedures of the church. And everything we're going to talk about today pretty much comes out of the admin manual. I brought one with me. I'm a real tactile person, visual. We have it online because it's changing constantly. And you can see it's very, very thick and it's always changing. So um, it's, a lot of the things are pretty standard, but as, as we speak now, the admin committee is updating some of the policies and man in the manuals, so we're always working on that. And if you would like, I can have a copy of it sent electronically to each of you. Most of what we're discussing today comes out of section um, 10. So, you want one? Well, where is it online? Oh, um, I don't know if it's on, I, she can send it to you. I don't think it's on our web page, but I'll just ask Lee to send it to y'all. That way you can have it to refer to, but because I'm an older person, I like to have my paper. So, um, as officers of the church, if you're a new officer of the church, you'll be expected to know more than the average member and maybe ask questions about the actions of your committee the session or diaconate or why things are done a certain way. Um, people look to you to set the tone and even though things may not go the way that you um, you might have voted in the meeting or that you might personally feel, 
we do ask that everybody always be positive about the solution that comes out of each of our um, meetings. Uh, we have the manual and you just need to know it's written policy and it code, codifies and clarifies everything procedure and guidelines and this is mandated by our book of order. What does the manual cover? Well, that's when we get into these things about committees. And like I say, you are all recruited for specific committees based on your skill sets and your talents. And we look at what the job entails and who has the skill set that we think would be best with that. Um, so, like Lauren, your nose are. And, you know, she's had children here and been a, a very important part of that. And so I think you know, we tried to think of somebody who would be very well suited for that, so. Um, and Sharon, because she's on our admin team as a member of large, even though she's part of this class, she's also gonna help. And I thought maybe I might um, just go through mine and then let you come up and go through yours and then I'll kind of finish. Yeah. So Sharon is covering the nomination um, committee, so we will come back to that later. Functions of the session and diaconate, the duties of the book of order. The session is the governing body of the church. We assist in worship, encourage people in worship and service to God, strengthen and nurture the congregation. The diaconate serves those people in need. They minister to people in need, sick, friendless, and in distress and beyond the community of faith. Also assume other duties as delegated by session. Uh, the duties related to the to First Presbyterian Church. The session serves communion, assists in baptism, serves as greeter, attends session meetings, serve as chair, vice chair of committees, support the decisions of session in a positive manner regardless of the individual position, and attends worship service regularly, supports the church financially. If you're a deacon, you will usher at Sunday services, greet us, serve as a greeter, attend the diaconate meetings, serve on committees, and serve as a vice chair or chair, uh, serve as a, an officer friend to compromise, support the decisions of the diaconate in a positive manner regardless of individual position, attend church regularly, and support the church financially. Um, if you're, everybody in here today goes on their first year as an officer. Just be mindful when you reach your third year, you will in most instances, I don't I hate ever say in all instances, but those will serve as chair of the committee. So you kind of learn in your first year, you may serve an assistant chair the second year, and you'll serve as chair the third year. But know that there's a great um, support system in place to help y'all with any questions you might have, and there's always lots of people you can ask. With your meetings, you open and close with prayer. We have a quorum of a third plus the presiding officer for our regular meetings. Our session quorum is for admitting members is two elders and a moderator. We usually meet Sunday morning before those new members are accepted uh, into the congregation and we vote on. But every new member has to be voted on. Every person that asks to leave, we put it to session and session approves that too. Um, we always have open meetings for everything unless it's a highly sensitive personnel matter or something, and then we can um, go into, I can't think what it is. Executive. Executive. Executive, yes, yes, yes. But any, you know, if, if a member was interested in something y'all were discussing, if they were interested in um, anything, they are welcome to come. They're not a voting person. We keep minutes for all of our meetings, and we follow Robert's rules of orders, and motions come from committee must have been approved by the committee in substantially the same form as presented. Um, there are nine committee uh, ministries of session. There are eight for the diaconate, and committees usually meet on a monthly basis, usually a week or so before their session or diaconate meeting so they can have their minutes done and submitted so that all the members can read those at each meeting. Um, and you can recruit at-large members to your committee and in here there's also a listing of people that are at-large and most of them are people who usually most at-large 
you ask somebody to serve on your committee and they commit to a year of, <coughs> of service. Um, let's see. Um, for diaconate, I think they meet four times a year. And session, we meet the last Sunday of every month. Uh, committees should meet in January to appoint their vice chair, establish a regular meeting schedule, orient new members, and review the previous year's activities and any unfinished business. Um, other sections of this admin manual talk about church staff, our hiring policies, um, congregational meetings, trustees, policies for the use of the church building and fees, uh, child protection policy, benevolence programs, financial policies, guidelines for funerals, weddings, the list goes on and on. But it addresses pretty much everything. And if we have a situation come up that's not addressed, the admin committee will meet, we'll get a policy together, we present it to session, session approves it, and then it goes in the manual. So, any questions about that? Next is um, our ministry teams and this is where it lists the session and on the other side are the diaconate teams and I will just go up a brief thing of what goes with what. Uh, the building and grounds team that is a uh, diaconate team and they're responsible for the upkeep and maintenance of the church um, building and grounds contents, video equipment, vans, anything like that. They are always busy and always have lots and lots of projects going on. Yeah, is that diagonal session? That's it. I'm sorry. It's session. Jim Booth is our current. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay, I said diagonal. It changed. Yeah, it changed about a year ago. And, and the people that are on each committee, you know, sometimes if you're chair of a committee, that means you serve on another committee just by being chair. So, uh, Christian Education Committee is responsible for the discipleship of the congregation, overseeing children and adult education programs in the church, uh, Sunday school, Bible study, Legos, Legos, Vacation Bible School, Extended Sunday School uh, worship, and various camps and conferences. The financial oversight team shall be responsible for formulating the annual budget of the church, submitting it for approval, uh, monitor and evaluate all of our ongoing expenses and receipts to the congregation, as well as recommend any action to the session for any unbudgeted expenses over $5,000. Um, and then below that is a list of people who serve on the Financial Oversight Committee, and it changes based on people who are in those positions. Uh, missions and Outreach. Uh, responsible for the designation and oversight of the congregation's gifts to different missions and ministry projects locally, nationally, and globally. We gift only those charities or organizations and groups whose programs and projects address and expand one or more of Christian worship, education, um, evangelism, fellowship, or service. Personnel team, the ministry is responsible for developing, implementing, and reviewing personnel policies and procedures for the church staff. They work with the senior pastor to provide guidance and management of the staff. The team also conducts annual reviews for each church member and submits a budget reflecting any changes in compensation. Um, worship team. Worship team is a really big um, group. It's responsible for providing an atmosphere in which the congregation can enter in the inspirational worship of God. Normally, the church staff will oversee the order of worship, musical selections, and the participants in worship services. When necessary, usually for special services, the staff and worship team may work together on preparation. It's also responsible for scheduling and training of ushers for the various worship services. Uh, they oversee the preparations of the elements for the sacrament of communion. This has been a little bit different with COVID. I don't know when we would ever go back to actually passing the plates, but that is a very important part of the worship committee. They review all baptisms, communions, weddings, and forward these to the session for their action. Um, 
They have we have a flower committee that oversees the ordering displays of all of our beautiful flowers in the sanctuary. Uh, they're responsible for setup, cleanup of communion, as well as various furnishings and instruments such as candle holders, communion tablecloths, and our polishing our silver um, services. Um, there's a music committee also that's part of that, and they work together with Director of Music Ministries to serve as a staff liaison. And the youth team, youth ministry is responsible for the discipleship of young people in grades 6 through 12, regular meetings in middle school and high school youth groups, youth retreats, athletic teams, annual summer mission trips, and Sunday schools. Um, standing committees of the session. I've already told you a little bit about what the admin committee does. We have a columbarium committee, um, which is established on the church grounds. I think everybody knows it's over on that side of the church. It provides memorial space for those members buried elsewhere or anybody that wants to have their cremated remains or cremains of deceased church members and eligible um, persons. Okay, now I'm gonna give y'all a break and I'm gonna let Sharon come up and tell you about some of the committees. Um, the random committees. Random committees, <laughs> yes. I think that's the way we usually refer to it. They're not, I'm gonna get up here. <laughs> Make yourself at home. I guess, I guess. Um, they're designated just other committees. I mean, there's really no specific place for any of them. Um, I didn't bring the right folder up here. Oh, did I? No, mine. Here it is. It was underneath it. Okay. Um, no. Is this not? I know you have. I had it. Where, where did I? Excuse me. <laughs> I was just looking at it. Let me go back. Okay. Again. Yeah, probably stuck it in your green thing. Because it's got all the statistics that are new. Okay. Is this one? There's something under that line. Ah, oh, that's it. There it is. Because yeah. I updated it. It's got all brand new statistics. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. So I get the others. Um, first one being the nominating committee and when we were working on the administrative manual we spent hours hours trying to figure out exactly according to the book of order how to establish this nominating committee um, and exactly what its role was going to be um, <clears throat> one of the things that we had to deal with is that the nominating committee I'll get to that later um, <clears throat> the purpose of the nominating committee is to propose candidates for election to church office, leadership positions in the session, and diaconate, and membership on a pastor nominated committee. So if that actually comes up that we need to do that, then this nominating committee is in charge of that also. Their, their role does not end once the nominations go to the congregation. If you have someone who moves or resigns or during the middle of the year, the nominating committee is responsible for proposing a name to fill that spot. Um, the committee consists of three elders, one deacon, and three at-large members. The at-large members usually include representation from Presbyterian women and the youth ministry. The nominating committee is elected at a congregational meeting after the first of the year, and that was, y'all may have heard me ask, Kyle that question a little while ago because that that meeting has not yet been set for exactly when it will be but part of the one of, another thing that the administrative administrative committee has did year before last was spend lots and lots of time on leading us to having a more involved nominating committee <clears throat> and when you heard Beth talk about um, when you received a call to take a position and you hopefully were told what committee you would be on, that was one of the things that we decided in the administrative team was extremely important to get our jobs synced with the people who have the skills to do them. And we're on about the third year, I guess, of doing it like that. And <clears throat> I, 
for myself, having been on that committee and having chaired it and I know Bob, each year it looks to me as if we are doing an even better job of having people like you all who have accepted positions in your skill category. So, you know, we're working in that direction and feel very, very comfortable that we are moving that way. Um, Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark Preschool is the Ministry of Harsh Presbyterian. I'll let you come up here and talk about it, Missy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's the Ministry of First Presbyterian Church Greenwood, existing to serve the children and families of the congregation and community in a Christian environment. The current enrollment is 86, which is phenomenal. I mean, we are so excited about that. When I was chair of this committee, we were struggling to keep it at 80. So now we're up to 86, with one more coming in January. It consists of children from ages three months to K-4, with three and five day classes, that include music and Spanish. Noah's Ark Preschool staff are employees of First Presbyterian Church under the leadership of Director Kim Masters, but responsible to the senior pastor, Dr. Kyle Height. The Noah's Ark Preschool Board of Directors includes both an elder and a deacon who serves as a chair of the board. The current chair is Joyce Brown. The diaconate and session positions provide liaison communication between the school and the church. Endowment. The endowment is a nonprofit organization established to support and benefit Greenwood First Presbyterian Church. This was another area that I became involved in because someone came to me and said, we need an elder. And it has been probably one of the most fulfilling things that I had the opportunity to do. Um, I rotated off when I rotated off the session. but. Um, <clears throat> the support of the endowment is in the form of financial assistance for carrying out religious, charitable, and educational purposes. The endowment acts as an organization with the collection, receipt, investment, and reinvestment of contributions, donations, and bequests. Its board of directors consists of nine members. Five of the nine members are the trustees of Greenwood First Presbyterian Church as elected by the congregation. The remaining directors are, and that's what Peggy is coming on as, the trustee. Um, the remaining directors are appointed by the session, one from each class. One at large director, either an active or inactive, is appointed by the session. The current chair of the endowment is Jay Nixon. In 2021, the endowment improved 100, approved $100,000 for distribution. They usually base this on a percentage of the income or percentage of the investments, and this year I believe it was 6%. Um, occasionally. It has gone as high as 8%. I believe they kept it at 6% this year. Um, recipients to date have been, but were not limited to, $20,000 for Hospice of the Piedmont, $36,000 for Greenwood Pathway House, $5,947.85, consisting of $4,276 from the Leary Christian Education Restricted Fund, and $1,675.85 from unrestricted funds, all of those combined together for the improvement of the Christian, um, of, Christian of the youth, excuse me, youth Sunday School area. Um, at the September meeting of the endowment, a request for $17,750 or less was approved to pay for the air, airfare to support Palmetto Girls Sing for their rescheduled trip to New Orleans. The final amount for that one will be determined by the number of girls who attend. Also in September, $2,000 was approved to support the 2021-2022 Festiva Concert Series. Presbyterian Women is an inclusive group of women with membership open to men um, who choose to participate in or be supportive of PW in any way. Presbyterians support, among others, the Burton Center, Pathway House, the Samaritan Cross Christmas Shoe Project, the Clinton Presbyterian Community, Quiet Acres, Greenwood Food Bank, Greater Greenwood United Ministries, Thornwell Home, and provision of bereavement meals. Cir circle participation is a way of, that a membership may be expressed. However, all women who are members of First Presbyterian Church are considered to be members of Presbyterian Women. And the last one is the Memorials Committee, and this is another one that we worked quite a bit of time 
in the, on the administrative team to, to get clarified um, so that we could have it in, in the manual. The memorial committee, composed of five members chosen and approved by the session, makes proper acknowledgement of each memorial gift to the donor as well as to the family of the person in whose memory the gift is made and keeps appropriate records of each gift in the Book of Remembrance. Memorial funds are deposited in a restricted account unless specifically designated by the donor, the committee may assign the gift where it is most needed by the church. And for instance, the most recent one that I know about, which has just, thank goodness, been approved, is um, there was application made to the memorial committee to buy new stainless for the kitchen. And um, Martha, Ann, Martha Ann spent a lot of time researching different patterns and weights and everything and came up with the best one and um, anyway the memorials committee approved it which was delightful and we hope to have it in-house by the time we have the joint dinner with Westminster's women. Um, that stainless will not be used on Wednesday nights <laughs> because we think that that's what has happened to the stainless that was there is that people actually throw it in the trash or whatever, it's so easy. So we feel like we can keep up with it better if it is kept under, in a, in a locked closet somewhere with other things that are kept that way for specific uses such as bereavement meals, um, the joint dinner. There are several in the session, the dinner for the um, session and the deacons. So, but that was real exciting that the Memorial Committee did just approve that expenditure. I think that's a great job. It's nice to know where, where our needs are and mm -hmm. what we've contributed to. And these are kind of, they're not all exactly in that order, but I thought when Sharon did her part, it'd be easier for her instead of us going back and forth and back and forth to let her go ahead and do the ones that she was going to talk about. Um, some of the others that I have are Congregational Care Ministry. Uh, it's a ministry of the diaconate through, although non-deacons may be recruited to serve, mm -hmm. this team works with Stephen Ministry, home communion, visitation, and our prayer teams. Uh, they oversee any visitation to homebound members or anybody that desires a visit, correspondence to those in distress, need, or facing loss, offer care for the out-of-area military personnel of the congregation as well as the congregation's college students. Concern and support for widows and widowers shall also be a focus. We have the visitation committee is responsible for visits to shut-ins who are homebound and in nursing homes. Uh, the Stephen Ministry is a responsibility of this team. Stephen Ministry is committed to providing trained caregivers to for one-to-one -one care and support for members going through any challenging times. We also have a home communion committee responsible for scheduling and serving communion to church members who are unable to attend services at church. That's, they also have the prayer team, a group of interested people whose simple mission is to pray for others who are in need of prayer for various reasons. All requests are kept strictly confidential. They pray daily for people on the list. On Sundays, the whole group is in prayer at the same time in their homes from 7.30 in the morning until 8.30 for those on the list. There's also a prayer box in the lobby of the church where any prayer requests can be made. Um, fellowship team. The fellowship ministry is to encourage and enhance a, a sense of community, Christian community among the members and friends of the congregation. It seeks out ways that we can grow in this important aspect of our life together. Opportunities of the fellowship team are overseeing Wednesday night dinner and program and church picnics. Um, they have small groups is a subcommittee of fellowship. Uh, the main focus of the small group team is to pro promote opportunities for memberships of the congregation to have fellowship and social time together in engaging activities and interests they have in common. Um, there's a hospitality subcommittee. Uh, will be the point for contact for social, religious, educational events sponsored by or promoted by the church that require any food, beverage, or other volunteers to host an event. So that's a very busy group. We also have the men of the church. is committed to involvement, fellowship, spiritual development of the men's church, 
focus on, is on service in the community. The chancel committee is responsible for communion setup and cleanup as well as the appearance of the chancel area and sanctuary. Uh, they're divided into two groups, the communion committee and the sanctuary committee. They're chaired by a deacon who will attend the worship committee meetings. They coordinate the activities of both of the communion and sanctuary committees. Recruit lay members to, that are needed, post rotations of committee duties and schedule an annual committee meeting. They clean up and set up for communion trays and plates prior to the scheduled communion services. Um, the music committee uh, was discussed previously as part of worship, but it's five members and chaired by a deacon selected by the diaconate. The ushers committee is under the direction of the worship committee also. And it maintains a spreadsheet of available ushers with phone numbers and dates served, um, prepare the schedule. They make sure that if you can't be there, that they get a substitute, because it's very important that we have ushers that are helping, especially when we have visitors. Um, standing committee on the diaconate, we also have a stewardship committee. They're responsible for devising and communicating the overall stewardship campaign to the congregation for the purpose of raising the funds which help establish and implement the annual budget of the church. Okay. Any questions about committees? Um, I've also enclosed in there your 2022 um, session listing of people who are, this is their third year on, this, and then the next one, so it's their second year, and then our new class of 2022. So, we also have youth elders, and then they also have the diaconate. Um, and the diaconate's chair is elected at the first meeting that the diaconate has in January. So, that's why a lot of this is not listed, and also, um, People can serve on different committees, and so this is still not finalized. I've endowment trustees listed, and then there's also a list like this that lets you see um, the different committees, who's serving on them, uh, if they're elders, if they're deacons, who their members at large are, and who their staff liaison is. So it's nice to see who's all on the committee. This just tells the classes and this tells the committees. Um, committees of the session and diaconate are filled by elected elders and deacons. Uh, your job is going to be to lead and guide your committees to fulfill our mission statement, which is through leadership within our community. We seek to attract, welcome, and nurture individuals and families who are seeking God and to help them grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ. We've already talked about committees meeting on a monthly basis. You need to make sure that Lee in the church office, when you're a committee chair or responsible for anything, or if you have to call a meeting for anything, make sure that she has a room reserved, and we try to publish those in the Bulletin Inspire to remind uh, members if anybody wants to come to that. Um, you keep your minutes and majority vote rules if a vote is taken. You need to always open and close with prayer. Determine if you have a quorum present. And have a written agenda, which includes new business and old business. And um, again, if one or more members object, you take a formal vote and record it in your minutes. This next child protection policy, and this is again part of our admin, mo um, admin manual, and we have to sign off to Presbytery that we did do the training for new church, new church officers as well as um, I'll do some training in our session meeting and the diaconate as well. Every church officer needs to be trained annually on it. Um, First Presbyterian Church is committed to maintaining a safe environment in which children and youth are nurtured and instructed in the faith and protected from abuse or neglect. 
We believe that we have a responsibility to provide a safe environment for children and youth, as well as support those who work with them. This policy applies to all those who work with children through First Presbyterian Church, including employees, church members, and volunteers. Our goals are to protect these children and the youth of First Presbyterian Church, to educate everyone concerning First Presbyterian Church safe child protection procedures, and to provide appropriate response guidelines. Um, and I will say, um, Yates, you helped with the Noah's Ark Safe Child. They have a, they're trained, and Kim does a great job training her workers every year, the first of the school year. They all sign off and say they're trained, and they have something that's a little bit separate and more fine-tuned for um, people who work in these situations. But just to know that, you know, you just think about all the people from uh, youth advisors to Noah's Ark teachers to um, volunteers who keep the nursery. Um, there are just so many people that are involved with our youth and we have to be very aware that we're looking out for their best interests. Application screening process for volunteers and employees. Uh, volunteers have to complete applications and they have a background check done. Any um, youth volunteers, they have to be 13 years old and a member of First Presbyterian and they have to be three years older than the minors with whom they are interacting. And they also complete the volunteer application, which is an application and a background check. Any employees that come to work here all have to have background checks because in the nature of child care regulations, all Noah's Ark preschool employees are required to submit to background and reference checks. Uh, this talks about the screening process for church employees and volunteers. Uh, Kyle reviews all of those and he also reviews when something comes back. He pretty much signs off on them if something comes back. Um, it's up to him to look at that. Keep in mind all of these are very confidential um, and um, it goes through what you can accept them unconditionally, accept with clearly defined restrictions or deny them employment. So. Um, and Kim Masters does those for Noah's Ark employees. Um, in order to carry out our mission, protect these children and youth and trust in our care, we commit ourselves to the following guidelines. Uh, all the activities will be supervised by employees and or adults who are at least 18 years of age. Um, Same-sex adult supervision will be provided on all trips and if we don't have an advisor, we can coordinate that with advisors from other churches to make sure that happens. In the case of an unforeseen circumstance or emergency in a classroom, when one adult is left with a group of minors, the door to the classroom is to be open and the remaining adult is to alert neighboring teachers or a supervising adult so checks can be kept on the group in case of need. Um, attention shall be given to ensure children and youth involved in our programs feel safe and avoid even the appearance of impropriety. Any allegations or suspected abuse will be handled according to the provisions of this policy. Uh, educational awareness and trainings of programs. Annual training will be conducted for all the employees of the church and Noah's Ark staff. Volunteers who work with any children under 18 and the elders and the deacons. Training will be completed by the staff supervisor. Information about the child care protection policy shall be available in the church, welcome center, and included in each new member packet. And Christian education and youth ministries will communicate annually to the entire congregation regarding the child protection policy at the beginning of the fall program year. We have not done that yet. But if we put it in a manual, we need to do it. So that is on our agenda. Uh, reporting procedures. And this tells what happens when somebody reports uh, that they think there's an allegation of abuse or neglect. And um, this outlines what we need to do to follow it. And the staff person shall immediately report any allegations to the pastor. Um, the staff member under supervision of the senior pastor will report the allegation of abuse to the proper authorities. 
the pastor <coughs> or his designee shall at all times serve as a spokesperson for the church unless otherwise determined by the session. And that's very important because we all know how you know the media can be. But Kyle is the only one who's really empowered to make a statement for our church. When a child care worker in the Noah's Ark has reason to believe that a child has been abused or neglected, the worker shall report immediately to the director of Noah's Ark, and that staff member will report the alleged abuse to the proper authorities under supervision of the Noah's Ark director. The Noah's Ark director will notify the senior pastor about the situation, and again, any comments on that come from Kyle. Within 24 hours of a report of abuse to authorities, the pastor shall inform the members of session of the allegations and report without reference to the names of those involved. And um, in the case of an allegation of abuse against an adult or youth aide, um, here again is your process for if an allegation is received against a church employee, Noah's Ark employee, or youth church volunteer, the pastor or immediate supervisor must report the allegation to the appropriate authorities for investigation. Tells about allegation of a church staff member, then allegation against a Noah's Ark staff member, uh, allegation against a church or a Noah's Ark volunteer, and then allegation against a pastor. So all of that is included in what the steps are if that should happen. And we all have to protect any victims um, and any volunteer employee of the church who becomes aware of an allegation or abuse or neglect will maintain confidentiality and will not share any information uh, except to the pastor, immediate supervisor, or the appropriate investigating authorities. Um, session response, once the local authorities have determined there's sufficient grounds for an investigation of the alleged abuse, the pastor's in session shall have a call session meeting for the purpose of outlining a congregational response plan. Tells what that plan needs to have in it. And then last in that thing is determined that the insurance carrier has been contacted. Um, on the last page is maintenance of the policy. The Director of Christian Education Formation Ministry and the Director of Youth and Young Adult Ministry will be responsible to implement this policy within their areas of responsibility. Both directors will review this policy on an annual basis to propose changes or amendments that allow the policy to function most effectively. An annual report will be prepared or reported to the session, including but not limited to background checks completed, reference checks completed, applications on file, and approved applications on file. All employees and volunteers will be required to update their application every three years. I will tell you this is um, that the admin committee is looking at how we're handling this, who's tracking these, who's responsible for them, what, and right now we go through um, a company that, I can't remember the name of it, but they deal primarily with churches and they have different levels and you know you can get different things on people's background checks depending on the number of levels more levels the higher the cost but i think you know if we say we're going to do it in our policy we have to do it and it's very important to protect any of these children the last thing i'm going to tell you well you don't have this in your book but it's something that i have to cover and sign off on for presbytery is about um, it's in the manual, it calls it harassment, but all church employees, volunteers, members, and attendees should find here an environment free from all forms of conduct that may be considered harassing, coercing, or disruptive, including sexual harassment or sexual misconduct. All church employees, volunteers, members, and attendees will behave in a manner that cannot be construed as being harassing, including sexually harassing, coercive or disruptive, or in any other way inappropriate. Any concern regarding harassment or sexual misconduct should be brought to the attention of the head of staff or the chair of the personnel team. Should such concerns or allegations involve one or both of the individuals holding these positions, then such concerns or allegations should be reported to the clerk of session. 
The personnel team will conduct a confidential investigation to gather facts and determine appropriate action to resolve these issues, recognizing that some allegations of sexual misconduct can involve matters beyond the investigative capability of the personnel team. Such allegations will be reported to the appropriate law enforcement agency for their investigation. So just know that we do have a policy in place to protect us, members of the congregation, as well. Um, officer reminders, if you're unable to attend a session or document meeting, respond to Lee no later than when the email reminder of the meeting is received in order to have an excused absence noted for the meeting agenda. I have a role that I take for every session meeting, for all our meeting today, I take a role. Um, but if you let Lee know, then you're excused. You know, she's, nobody's gonna make you bring in a note from your doctor or anything, but it's just helpful to know because I have to record that. Um, keep your contact information current. She does all of this by email. So it's the primary form of communication for notifications, and she also sends out our agenda packages. If you do not check email on a regular basis, contact Lee in the office to make other arrangements. It's your responsibility to uh, maintain correct contact information. And if you need her to, she will print out all of our information for you. Some people just prefer that, and they just maybe aren't that technologically um, advanced. But most of all of our session meetings have been Zoom. We try to do some in person and some Zoom, but uh, so everybody has been pretty much just going through what they have um, on their inbox. Your mailbox, your personal mailbox, physical mailbox is located here for those of you who are have not been an officer before. As you go down the hall by Kyle's office and uh, Elise's office, right there is some little mailboxes, and after y'all or installed and ordained they will put your name on that and it's your responsibility to check your mailbox um, names are in alphabetical order we get what we call monthly green sheets although they're because they're all online you, they're not green anymore they're just plain white but it has all of our finances and it's just um, the financial oversight team does them every month and um, it tells you how much money comes into the church, how much our expenses were, where we are on target with collections and stewardship. Um, you've been assigned to a committee. You're expected to attend committee meetings and participate. Uh, I've already said the session meetings are on the fourth Sunday of each month except for June and December. We can have called meetings that might be needed for any special action such as to receive new members, we also sometimes have electronic votes, and um, it's important when you respond to electronic vote, and usually Kyle will send out something if it's come to his attention, but it's a, I know people, it can be annoying, but people are supposed to respond off. And I know you're like, oh, I don't wanna get a yes, 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 yes from all these people, but I have to track the vote, so that allows me to say yes, yes, yes. It also allows you as a member if someone, um, and you perfectly able to vote no, but I think it's important that um, it, it's not anything secret. If we're voting in a session meeting, we all raise our hand and vote yes, and if you vote no, you raise your hand and vote no too, so it's, it's not anything that's secret. Um, You'll receive an agenda always before a meeting and attached information prior to the session meeting via email. If you need a hard copy again, Lee will be glad to print one out for you. Respond to all when responding to an electronic vote so I can record your vote. Um, everybody will be asked to serve as a greeter for Sunday um, at the 11 o'clock service. You just wear a little badge, you kind of stand at the door and you greet people and you um, speak to visitors sometimes like I was a greeter today you know where's the set where's the sanctuary where do I go what do I do where's the bathroom you know um, we have a police officer out there most Sundays he wasn't there today but he gets a lot of those questions too but everybody will be asked to serve as a greeter and if you can't serve as your time as a greeter we ask that you get a substitute and that's really easy to do um, 
Again, communion for our elders is usually on the first Sunday of each month, but we haven't done that since COVID. But it, when we, if and when we do resume that, um, you'll be asked to serve communion. Okay. <laughs> All right. Questions? Got it? <laughs> so, uh, two years ago, Mission Outreach had a person from the diet come on, but, but that has been discontinued. Is that correct? I think Anybody was, in here I can jump was, right in anytime you want to if you serve on that committee. That was, I think that was because it would involve having another, another deacon member, but I just wanted to clarify that. We moved, and, and we moved some of those around, mm -hmm. like we moved building and grounds, had been diaconate, they moved it to elder, but they kind of transitioned it over. Uh, but a deacon still serves on that. Mission and outreach, uh, elder, and a deacon serves on that committee. Got a lot of members at large, and Elise is the staff leader. There, there, uh, the last person was in the class of 20, uh, was Jessica Willard, but there, haven't, there hasn't been somebody the last two years. So I, I think maybe that's because it would have involved having a, another deacon. But I just wanted to clarify that. Um, I don't know, but I can find out. Thank you. I'm yeah. going to look at that. Yeah, I and I'll, yeah I'll, I'll look at that just to see, and it may be a deacon who's chair of something can serve on that committee, but that wouldn't be their one assigned. Yeah, I wasn't sure yeah, that was I mean, and, and you'll find, like, Preston Culbertson serves on my admin committee just because he's in that position. Uh, the outgoing chairs of uh, finance and I think maybe not many. several people because of their position serve on another committee but they're not ever going to have to chair that they just serve okay. pretty much as a voting member or a member at large any other questions I would love to thank you all for joining us today and just let me know if you have anything else that you have questions about that I didn't answer or um, if there's anything that I can help you with or share in as well. So. Okay. Great. Y'all can go home. Oh, wait.